Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I'm going to update you on what's going on with these storms. Starting today, they have upgraded. It's gotten a little worse in tornadoes as well as large hail, a bigger area being covered. Plus, we have damage and winds. Then going into tomorrow, the severe weather looks like it's really ramping up towards the south central as this cool front starts moving through. Plus, I'm going to update you on what's going on with this pattern in the tropics. I'm still showing the same scenario, guys, but I'm showing more and more Models are agreeing. Even the control member of the Euro is agreeing to this pattern, guys. So I'm going to give you all the latest updates. Thank you so much for your time. You've never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. Matter of fact, most important part is clicking that bell. If you don't check all on the bell, you only get one notification maybe a week from what's going on. But let's get into your latest information because you do have a lot of severe weather. You do have the tropics. Remember, timestamps are in the description below. Now, you have all these storms that's going to brew up for today and it is going to raise up your damage and winds and your chances for tornadoes. So for today, it has upgraded. You do have a little enhanced section where it's another little 5% that's going to add up for these chances for tornadoes as you go through this evening. Then it's going to turn into a damage and wind event, guys. Then all night long, early in the morning for tomorrow. Then they have more chances for tornadoes, which I think is going to grow. They have this little area. But HRRR keeps showing over and over that it's really going to brew up really strong all across Texas and Oklahoma. As that goes through, you can see all the cells within the path. And that's going to keep going to the east southeast with a lot of potency so that could stretch out as well guys now i'm gonna get into the information so you know what to expect remember hit a like on the video if this is helping you in any way share this to help others so you see the upgrades this morning the slight risk has grown way up just like we've been talking about but now they have that enhanced section right here and it is partially in portions of tornado and what's going to be coming with the hail as well. So with your tornado threat, it has grown for today. You have the 2% and the 5%. So far, here's your cities and states at risk. But you see the big wide area this front is going to produce. Also wind. You have a big area of the wind for today. A big 5% all the way from the Midwest all the way down to the South Central. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the damage and winds. And tomorrow looks a lot stronger, guys. I think it really will upgrade. You also have chances for hail today. Very large hail and all of this black one all the way through from Texas all the way into Nebraska with a big 30% hotspot right here for a lot of hail to come out. Even for tomorrow, I see this stretching as well for the south. So far, here's your chances for hail for today, your cities and states. The largest hail being the white line on top. And you can see this from National Weather Service, isolated, very large hail, occasional severe gusts, and a few tornadoes will be possible this afternoon through early tonight across parts of the Great Plains. Now, for tomorrow, this is where I'm pretty sure this is going to grow. You saw what I showed you on HRRR, and these are some serious storms that brew up for tomorrow. So, so far, your tornado threat is small. I think this will grow. I will update you in the morning. So far, a 2%. Here's your cities and states at risk for the tornadoes for tomorrow, for Wednesday. Now, you also have the wind threat and the hail threat. And the hail threat is carrying into very large hail all the way until tomorrow, definitely overnight into the early morning hours. So far, here's your cities and states at risk for the hail threat for Wednesday. And your large hail being the white line on top. Plus, you have your wind threat for tomorrow. Pretty much the same area. You just don't have that white line that's severe. But here's your cities and states for the damage and winds for tomorrow as well. And I do expect this to grow. But you can see these storms really brew up for today across Kansas, Nebraska, goes into South Dakota, goes all the way to Missouri as well. Starting to get some damaging winds with it as it goes through the evening. Remember, this is central time, guys, as it goes all the way to the upper Midwest. And that just brews all night long across the central plains. Starts weakening down as you go overnight to early morning hours. And still showing that that is just really brutal what brews up for tomorrow in the south for Texas and Oklahoma going into Arkansas as it goes into the early morning hours. And it's going to carry even further. It's just going to be early morning hours at this point. We can also see with your cape, with your lift, that the instability in the atmosphere grows very strong all afternoon long from northern Texas and Oklahoma into Kansas, even a little bit of southern Nebraska, but it really don't carry super far. This is where your strongest lift is going to be, guys, as it goes all the way to 9 and 10 o'clock. And then for tomorrow, it grows right back up for Texas, Oklahoma, even stronger than what we have 
for today all the way until 8 and 9 o'clock as well. A lot of strong storms coming and a lot of lift. But you can see with your dew points, you have a lot of strong dew points racing across for today. This is going to fill up the atmosphere and help produce these thunderstorms. But tomorrow you have a bigger area of even stronger dew points where these thunderstorms are going to be even more severe. Now once these storms start coming across, it's going to bring a lot of hail as you're starting from 3 o'clock all the way until later tonight, especially for Kansas and especially going into Nebraska. And these are some strong storms that's pushing through all night long going across Kansas and Nebraska. Starting around 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and this is starting to bring hail already. And you can see that here. It is tracking in the hail as the storm starts brewing up. And they are strong storms. This is going to bring a lot of chances for your tornadoes, especially as you go from 5 o'clock. Look at this hail that's coming through as you go from 5 o'clock for the rest of the evening. And it does track even further south. So it goes into Nebraska, starts building up. Then it goes into Kansas, starts building up. But it's mostly look like a big windbag event, a big damaging wind event that's going to be coming with this as we go through the evening. And then for tomorrow, spark right back up so all together you get all this very large hail for today tonight and then for tomorrow look at all the large hail that comes across texas and oklahoma even some very strong cells that comes across from the panhandle into oklahoma as you go from three o'clock into the evening definitely watch for these cells as they come across for tomorrow guys because this is going to be just as powerful as for tonight matter of fact the hail looks like it's going to be even stronger and bigger for tomorrow and your damage and winds look like it's a little stronger as well for tomorrow h triple r is picking up some strong winds coming all night long from 4 p.m all the way from nebraska northern kansas into minnesota some of these cells very powerful cells but once you go for tomorrow look at the winds for tomorrow coming with those storms through oklahoma and texas and this is looking right at the dfw so you can see as these cells pass through this evening, going from Kansas, Nebraska, and the South Dakota, going towards Minnesota as well. They're starting to bring those 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts with them. Even some of them cells showing maybe a chance for 60 as you go through some of those cells as it goes from eastern Nebraska into Minnesota. So watch out. It could be some strong cells coming with this as it comes by. Some cells look like it's mostly 40s. But some of them look like there could be some 50 and 60 in there as you go through the evening. Now, the ones for tomorrow is piling up a lot of winds as well. You mostly are starting around 4 and 5 o'clock in the afternoon. You start getting the storm start bursting up towards Texas, towards Oklahoma as that travels to the east. And that is what's bringing your winds with that 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Even some high 60s in there as these storms come across, guys. This is going to be a serious band of storms going right by the DFW in Oklahoma as well. Please be aware of that. And I know you need a rainfall, but once you go towards Wednesday and the rest of the week, is really going to add up to a bigger area. And this is going to bring all that flash flooding as well. It is bringing a lot of rainfall. I know you need it, but look at it. You're getting two, three, even up to four inches or more of rainfall coming with all of this storms and tomorrow is going to be really the worst for the south central those storms look pretty strong for tomorrow a quick update on the tropics guys as you can see all we have is still fleep out there still bringing some minor flooding and some winds towards the luster and tilly islands but as you can see as of the beginning of october we are well above average for our hurricane season so far now in the eastern pacific we do have lydia not doing nothing to anybody and we have another disturbance growing over here this is going to keep happening and then we're going to have eventually two maybe three cyclones forming over here in the eastern pacific but eventually this is all going to change to where our favorable environment is all across from the western caribbean all across central america make sure you get this shot of the central america so you know what i'm talking about but all across western caribbean central america the gulf of mexico and the eastern Pacific. So either these storms are about to go out into the Pacific or they're about to go into the Pacific and turn and be pulled back to the east northeast, trending everywhere. And you can see this on your latest potential velocity anomaly that we do have a lot of favorable environment as we go from the 10th towards the 15th, right in our region from the Western Caribbean right towards Central America into Eastern Pacific. This whole region 
is going to be having a lot of favorable environment for thunderstorms to grow and expected to grow. We have another one coming later in October as well and another one in the beginning of November. Matter of fact, you can see this transition with the Euro chance for a tropical depression in a week, in seven days, as tropical wave starts adding up towards the southern half of the Bay of Campeche, the southern Gulf, towards the eastern Pacific, everything's going to start bottling up in that area. Then it's going to have a high pressure block in 10 days, and everything's going to be favorable to start moving out back to the east. And now this is also going to bring cyclones into our Gulf and bring them further across. And the best case scenario, bring some more heavy flooding possible some more storms and maybe even some strong tropical storms so you can start to see that once you start getting this cool front that's going to last for quite some time we're still getting that high pressure block a negative nao we get a high pressure block in the atlantic and it keeps everything blocked right here so it bottles up all this cool air for quite some time when that happens all these cyclones are going to start getting pushed into the pacific the eastern pacific we're going to start getting an upper level high in the Caribbean, and this is going to vacuum in between what's circling up here in the northern U.S. and what's circling in the Caribbean. It's all going to vacuum right towards the east, southeast, right over the U.S., and start coming in this direction. And you can see the latest update on your NAO, your North Atlantic Oscillation, that all of them are agreeing that this is going to be a somewhat a long-duration block event in Atlantic only the GFS is taking it where it's such extreme of a block where it's going to bring this strong trough all the way to the southeast. Now, it also means that only the GFS believes those cold temperatures are going as far as you might see in some of the model data. The Canadian and the Euro is agreeing that it is going to be those cold temperatures I showed you yesterday, but it's not going to be super freezing or super bad. So what you get is when you get that block, you get all this favorable environment. You get all this low pressure, all this lift going on in the whole area. Look at all these cyclones in the eastern Pacific. And then they get pulled out through the Gulf, showing anywhere from a week to a strong tropical storm on the edge of being a hurricane. So far not showing that. We all know, though, if it goes in the Gulf, it probably will ramp up if it has enough time going right across towards the southeast and always been showing a western curve after that that's just too far but so far let's get past this turn because some is showing that this is going to happen some is showing this may not it's a very close event we can also see this with the canadian getting that block storms instead of going to eastern pacific they get pulled out into our gulf going on that eastern path you can also see this with the control member of the euro guys so saying in six days we are going to get some kind of low pressure in the eastern pacific and as it rolls on to the west it gets that blocking pattern now it gets pulled back to the east guys as you go from the 12th through the 14th and 15th all the way to the 15th towards the 20th remember i showed you yesterday that it's showing at the 15th through the 20th is showing the strongest agreeing on a tropical storm around the 15th through the 17th guys as it goes across and you can see this here it gets all the way out into the pacific and then when we get that blocking pattern big high pressure blocks and everything gets pulled out to the east remember we're going to have this big high pressure blocking pattern because those warm temperatures are going to come right back so you can see right here with the control member of the euro goes across goes to the southeast and goes somewhat close towards the east coast. So we do need to watch this. You can even see with all the ensembles of the GFS, but just going by the control member, just like we did with the Euro, the control member of the GFS is confirming that this will get pulled into the Gulf eventually, but also agreeing that it will be weak. So you can even see right here on your chance for your cyclone locations, once you go to the 10th, everything's gonna bottle up in the Eastern Pacific. But once we go into that pattern, everything's going to start getting pushed into the Gulf and go on that eastern pattern, guys. I'm telling you, we need to watch this transition. You can even see in these ensemble members, as you go towards the 10th, everything starts flowing around from the Western Caribbean towards the east. And here's the GEFS. You can see the same thing. Once you hit the 10th, instead of the eastern Pacific, it all gets pulled into the Caribbean into the Gulf and goes on this pattern towards the east. A best case scenario showing so far, maybe bringing some very heavy flooding 
towards the southeast, maybe even curve towards the northeast as well. The euro is also seeing the precipitation start to add up and go that way, but still not showing any formation. Shows it just stays blocked over here for a long time. But thank you so much for your time. I hope this has helped you in any way. If it has, please consider hitting the like button, hit that subscribe button. I am all year along. Now this severe weather is going to get pretty serious, guys. It looks like it's strong today, and it's a different type of storms for tomorrow. So please get ready for the storms as well. Now real quick, I'd like to speak to you with James 4, verses 7 through 10. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. God bless you and your families. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always blesses you every single day of your life and keeps you safe, you and your families, now and forever. <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! <laughs> have a great day, everybody.